Welcome back. We have with us the Junior Sabres. And they're in, in the audience we have with us the president of the Junior Sabres. As it rolls off my tongue, I find it even hard to believe. President of the Junior Sabres, Larry Playfer. Larry, I, re I knew you when. <laughs> you know, I mean, I you knew, knew you were yeah. a player and running the alumni, but now you're, you're the team president of the Junior Sabres. Tell us how that all came about. It was by default. There was, there was a <laughs> default. actually, uh, in 08, uh, the Sabres had, uh, in 07, the Sabres had agree agreed to give the uh, junior team in town uh, the right to wear the jersey. And in 08, Larry Quinn came to myself and Grant Ledger and said, hey, you know, you guys want to get involved with this team and maybe see if there's anything we can do for them. And, and uh, so Grant and I went and met with the, the then owner and uh, some other folks that were involved in the team. And it just it led to us getting involved and then, uh, and, and then more involved. And there came an opportunity when the owner wanted to get out. So at that point, we, uh, we went and met with the, junior, with the uh, Alumni Association. And uh, between the Alumni Association and the Sabres, we both agreed that we would uh, take over running the team and the, the alumni would be responsible for it. So at that time, it was myself and Grant, and, and I wasn't going to be the coach, so Grant was the general manager and head coach, and uh, I helped him as an assistant and did all the, the other stuff. So, uh, And it was, a, it was a, a good first step. Back then, there was 36 teams in the league. Uh, now there's only 22, and the competition level has really, really gotten better, and, and uh, Mike Peck is now our, our coach and, and has done a really good job of putting together a pretty nice hockey club. These, these kids are good. Why don't you identify a couple of the young men in the front row there? Well, the guy right, right in the, on the, uh, from my left-hand side uh, is, uh, is Derek Patterson. He's our captain, defenseman, second year here. Uh, uh, our, one of our goaltenders, Parker, Parker Gahagan's in the middle in the, in the row. And Ryan Schmelzer's next to Patterson. I see uh, Ryle Ledger there in the front row. What's Ryan the Ruff. age group of your team? We, have two six, we can have two 16-year-olds, and we can go up to 20 years old. And generally what happens, like the league has changed. There's only one reason these kids are on our hockey club, and it's, it's to at some point uh, move on to college. Uh, I shouldn't say there's only one reason. We've had a couple of kids uh, move on and play uh, high-end uh, junior hockey. But generally the, these boys here are looking to get a, a deal and go to college, either a Division I scholarship or, or play D3. And, and if you look at any of the D3 rosters, D1 rosters in in the United States, most of the kids on the teams are, are freshmen at 21 years old. Mm -hmm. So they, they, uh, the coaches look for kids to come to play a, for, for on a team like ours. Uh, we give them a good springboard to, to play at a high level and, uh, and then be able to uh, compete and, and, uh, and send them off to school. Now we, we make all of our kids, the ones that have, have graduated high school, make sure they take at least one course uh, college. Uh, just you know, just to keep their their minds into it, and and uh, we've had a lot of success last year. We were lucky enough to have five of our boys move on to. Wow, that's college. great. Yeah, how's this group doing this year? These guys are uh, these guys are doing really well. I keep my fingers crossed. But they are uh, six and two right now. And uh, there was a there was a, a, a poll came out in Canada, and these kids were honorable mentions in the top twenty uh, tier two teams in the country. And uh, you know, there's there's probably well over 100 teams, you know, across the country, and, and these guys were, were rated as honorable mentions in the top 20. So they've done, they've, ex I, if, if, you, if Michael Pecker was sitting here, he would say, no, they haven't exceeded my expectations. But uh, I don't think we've seen the best that they've got yet, and, and uh, it's, it's fun watching them. It's good hockey. If somebody does want to go watch them, where's the home rink and where can you catch them? The home playing? rink is uh, the Northtown Center, which was the old Pepsi Center uh, in Amherst. And uh, most of our games are 7.30. They vary Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at home. Uh, generally, the weekends we're on the road. But folks can uh, go to the Buffalo Junior Sabres website and, uh, and see the, uh, the schedule there. And uh, come, I mean, it really is. I'm, it, I obviously, I'm biased. I'm part of the operation here. But it is, it's real good hockey. And there's nothing else going on, is there, right now? Not, not right now. <laughs> oh, and I'm going to ask you about this. But look at the video. You know, it's, it's great to see guys like yourself involved and Mike Peck is behind the bench and to see the, the, the Sabres that so many of us knew and love and, and involved with the team. And, uh, and that's going to bring us to, you know, I was telling Larry, we were going to use some, we just saw some video of the Junior Sabres. We were going to have some video of Larry during his career, you know, because he was such, you know, the rumor was you were such a tough guy. And, uh, but we couldn't find any video of you winning any fights, so we didn't want to yeah, embarrass you out here on the show. Yeah, well. 
Thank you. I appreciate it. You can that. laugh, guys. See, they don't want to laugh. You're the team president. But you know, you've been through, I mean, you've been around the league for so long. Yet another NHL lockout. And I'm not going to ask you for anything that you may have heard in a room a clo behind closed doors. But what's your sense of how long this is going to take? And will this be the last lockout for a while? I don't know, and I hope so. I, I don't know how long it's going to take. And, and I was actually... Uh, I, I thought through this weekend, you, you know, we, we would hear every now and then or, or read online that they were meeting and positive things were happening. And then they even met again today, Bettman and, and uh, Fear, and, and uh, the thinking was, you know, they might come to some kind of an agreement. And uh, they haven't, or th they haven't that we know of. And, and uh, I don't know. I mean, this, if you listen to some of the players and, and the people on the periphery, it sounds like uh, it might be late November, December, you know, before they get this thing going again. It's, it's frustrating for, for me as a fan because the game has come so far in, you know, in, in the last seven years. Um, the, the, the record crowds in the buildings, uh, revenues are up, real good hockey. You know, LA wins the Stanley Cup and who would ever thought they would have, but good for our game. I mean, real good hockey and, and uh, lots of, uh, you know, NBC took the contract and really wasn't making much money. Now they're doing well with the game because the, the, the audience is up. And, uh, and then this happens, and it's just frustrating. And for Buffalo, because, you know, we've got a relatively new owner, Terry Pagula, who obviously doesn't mind spending money. Last year was a disappointment. Everybody had such high hopes. Team caught fire late, just not enough gas to get into the playoffs. So everybody was hoping with a couple free agent signings that this would be uh, a turnaround year where they'd be in the playoffs and make a run. And then to not have it start is such a letdown for the fans. Well, it's a letdown for the fans, and I, and I would bet that Mr. Pagula is probably wishing that, that the season would get going as well. And, and it will happen soon enough, and, and, and it'll, you know, we'll move on, and, and, and it'll start up again. It's just, it's just you know, this, it's frustrating. You know, I, uh, I mean, we were talking before the show. We were talking about, you know, because you're, you're, you're all over YouTube. And, you know, YouTube, you can go to YouTube now <laughs> and watch great games and great players. And, and, uh, but we were, I was laughing because, you know, I'm, I'm older than you are. I'm much older than you are, oh, I yeah. think. And, oh, yeah. But the video quality from when you played in the 80s, it looks like it was like in the 20s. Yeah. Um, the game has changed so much, yeah. hasn't it, since you and, were... And, you and the biggest game. difference you'll see, if, if you ever, when they pan by the old goaltenders, and then you see the guys today and uh, how big the equipment is and how much less room there is to score. Uh, and, and I would say, overall, that's the biggest difference. Uh, that and... And in the early 80s, they didn't have any advertising on the dashboard. So you look at the game and you see all this white and you go, what the heck? And... And, yeah, so later on, some, some of the owners got smart and said, well, why don't we put some advertising on the boards? And now they all make yeah. quite a bit of money doing that. It's all about the coin. Yep. Uh, and Larry, of course, uh, head of the Alumni Association. And uh, the Alumni Association will be playing a game. I want to give a plug. Uh, Sunday up at uh, High Park Ice Rink, uh, raising some funds for a great cause. Uh, so if you get a chance, go out there and buy a ticket. But you don't play anymore, but uh, the alumni is very involved in the area. I don't, and actually, I stepped down in January. Rob Ray is the, the president of the oh, Alumni okay. Association, yep, and it's, it's in good hands. And uh, we, we're blessed in Western New York, and, I, and I'm involved in the NHL alumni, and I see how much you know, we do in Western New York, and it's, it's more than most of the NHL teams, and it's because we have so many of our guys living right here. Larry, I want to thank you so much for being on the show. Don't go anywhere because we have free pizza after the show's over. For my guys. For all the guys. For all you guys, and you can have a slice. Too. Tomorrow night they play, by the way, Bob. Oh, know, so they should be itching to come out and see a game. Tomorrow night, 7.30. At? Yeah, at the Northtown North Center. Okay. 7.30. Good plug. Hey, we'll be back with Jay Skursky. We're going to talk Buffalo Bills right after this.